Hey y'all, guess what? We are fixing to dive in to the wonderful world of trigonomic ratios. And guys, this is my favorite thing for us to learn about. And one of the reasons why is one, because it's fun, right? Two, because this is something that no matter where you go as far as your math or science, you're going to end up using this again. You're going to use this again in physics. You're going to use this again in pre-cal. And guess what? You never know. You might use it when you get older and you start building things. Maybe you are a construction worker, you know, or you're an architect. You never know, even interior designers. So trigonomic ratios that we're going to learn about can be used any time you have a right triangle and only when you have a right triangle okay so remember pythagorean theorem and the special right triangles those also you can only use those when you have a right triangle so what we're going to do today guys is there's actually three trigonomic ratios okay they are known as sine cosine and tangent now we're going to just focus on the tangent function today. So we're going to use the tangent function to solve for some problems. And guys, I'm going to show you guys how to break down a real world word problem and use the trigonomic ratio. So before we do that, guys, let's talk about how do we know when to use what ratio. Okay. So when we are using the tangent ratio, we are going to refer to the adjacent side and the opposite side. And actually, we're going to refer to those with all of the ratios. But today, we're going to focus a lot on those. So, guys, remember, adjacent means that it is next to. Okay? So, a leg that is next to an acute angle of a right triangle. Now, guys, that is the angle that is created by the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse. Okay? So, if you guys will see... Right here, we have our angle, okay? The adjacent side is created by the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse. Notice it says the hypotenuse will never, ever, ever be the adjacent side because, guys, the hypotenuse is always, always, always across from the 90-degree angle, and the name for it is hypotenuse. So remember that, okay? Now, the opposite side, okay, is going to be the side that is literally, and I'm going to actually draw this, it is literally opposite of the angle. It is across the triangle, and it's opposite of the angle that we're looking at. Okay, so that is known as the opposite side. Okay, now, the hypotenuse will never, ever, ever be the opposite side. Even though the hypotenuse is opposite of the 90-degree angle, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot use the trigonomic ratios when your reference angle is the 90-degree angle. And I'll show you what that means here in just a second. Because when we deal with these triangles, what we're doing is we're seeing, okay, where in the triangle am I standing? It's like my reference point. So your point of reference is going to make a huge difference. Okay, so if I'm in the front of the classroom, what is opposite of me is the back of the classroom. But if you're in the back of the classroom, what is opposite from you is the front of the classroom. So guys, your point of reference, where you are at in the triangle, is going to make a difference on which side is opposite and which side is adjacent. Remember, hypotenuse is always, always, always across from the 90 degree angle. Okay, let's dive in and let's take a deeper look. Okay, you use a trigonomic ratio to find a missing side length in a right triangle when you know one of the acute angles so that would be like ang either angle A or angle B. And you know the measure of one of the side lengths, either opposite, adjacent, or sometimes it's going to be the hypotenuse. Okay. So remember, when we used the Pythagorean theorem, we knew two side lengths and we were going to find the third side length. When we used the special right triangles, we knew that we either had a 45, 45, 90 and one side length, or we had a 30, 60, 90 and one side length. But now, guys, with trigonomic ratios, we're going to be able to find side lengths and angle measures for any right triangle in the world. Okay, so let's dive in a little bit deeper. Yes, I keep saying dive in deeper. Guys, this is going to get deeper and deeper, okay? The trigonomic ratio is just that. We're going to set it up as a ratio, okay? So you guys will see what is in this box right here that says the tangent 
of angle A equals the length of the opposite side, okay, over the length of the adjacent side, which is down here. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how this works and how we're going to put it in our calculators and everything here in just a second. Okay, so again, tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Okay, and I'm going to, again, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to work this. Before we do, guys, we need to focus on a new vocabulary term, angle of elevation. Angle of elevation says that I start by my line of sight is parallel to the ground, okay, or the horizontal line of sight. And then it's the angle that is created when we look up. So watch this. Angle of elevation. If I am looking out into my backyard, you know what those crazy cats that are in my backyard. This is my horizontal line of sight. But then if I see a bird up in a tree, that is now the angle of elevation that I looked up at the bird. So the angle in between my arms is known as the angle of elevation, okay? So angle of elevation is created by the horizontal line of sight and the angle created when you look up, okay? So that's something that you'll need to look at. Okay, so guys, you'll see the angle of elevation. I wanna show you guys something cool here. If I were to draw in a vertical line from the object and make it perpendicular to a, the ground, hey, notice that I just created a right triangle. And if I have a right triangle, then I can use the trigonomic ratios to help me solve for some angle measurements. Okay, Miss Smith, you're talking complete foreign language to us right now. I get it, guys. Let's go do some examples together, and I'm going to show you how we figure out when to use the trigonomic ratio, what we put into the opposite and the adjacent, and how we plug it into our calculators. Okay, before we do that, I'm going to show you guys a little video about, okay, where are these trigonomic functions on the ratio and what in the world do they mean? All right, so take a look at this real quick. And then guys, I'm gonna meet you down at number two after the video. Go take a look at this video. Hey guys, okay, so we're gonna dive deeper into trigonometry, which you guys know I love trigonometry, right? And really trigonometry, again, it's just the study of triangles. But as we dive deeper into it, we're going to go past the Pythagorean theorem and past the special right triangles, the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90. And we're going to talk about trigonomic functions. And what those trigonomic functions allow us to do is to actually use an angle measure that's not a 45 degree or a 30, 60 degree okay, to actually find the side lengths of a triangle. Okay, now, these trigonomic functions, we're going to learn about three of them here in geometry, okay? Sine, which is abbreviated S-I-N on your calculator. Cosine, which is abbreviated C-O-S on your calculator. And tangent, which is abbreviated T-A-N on your calculator. Now, we're going to learn about these three functions. Now, a function, when, it, when I say function, it literally just does a calculation in your calculator. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that here in just a second. Okay, but we're going to use these functions, if you will, based upon the ratios of the side lengths. Like what side lengths do we have? What side lengths do we want? All right, guys, so you should have your calculators out in front of you and I'm gonna show you over here what buttons you need to press to make sure that your calculator is in the correct mode to do all of these trigonomic functions. Now remember, the trigonomic function, it's, it's a calculation. It's a calculation of the sides of the ratios of the triangle, okay? And the calculator, when you press these trig functions, sine, cosine, or tangent, it's going to do all of the calculations for you. Thank goodness you guys don't have to do it like we did back in the day. We had a thick, thick, thick book that we had to look up all of the ratios. It was time consuming. Now you guys can do it lickety split, but you have to make sure that your calculator is in the correct mode. So what I mean by that is you're gonna click the mode button, which is right here beside the second key. You're gonna hit mode. And guys, this is gonna pop up on your screen. 
Now, when it pops up on your screen, if you see the third row down, it says either radian or degree. Now, that's important. We me can measure angles in what's called radian measure or degrees. Well, just like we have centimeters and inches to measure the side lengths, you can measure an angle in radians or degrees. Well, in here, in geometry, we're only gonna be measuring our angles in degrees. So we need to make sure that the degree is highlighted. So to do that, you're going to press the down arrow key, okay? And then you're gonna press the right arrow key until the degree is highlighted, and then you press enter. Okay, now the degree is highlighted, and now your calculator is in the correct format. All right, so I'm gonna hit second mode, and that's gonna quit. And as you guys see, here are the keystrokes that I took to get to where I needed to be to check my calculator, okay? CYC, check your calculator, right? You'll hear me say that a lot during our videos. So CYC, check your calculators right now. Make sure that they are in degrees, okay? And let's go back and let's continue the other part of our video. All right, see you guys in just a second. All right, guys, so what I just showed you guys with your calculators, I wanna remind you guys, it is your responsibility every day to check your calculator, CYC, all right? So you wanna make sure that the values that you are calculating are in degrees. If you calculate them in radians, you're gonna get some weird number and it's not gonna calculate it right and you're gonna get the answer wrong, yada, yada, yada. Make sure, CYC, check your calculator every single day. Now, the calculator will only calculate the correct values if we, CYC, check your calculators, right? So make sure that you guys CYC every day. Can you guys see why I'm saying this is important? I'm repeating it over and over and over again. Okay, so when you guys watch the video with the calculator, did you guys notice that these trigonomic functions are just that, they're a function, right? It's just like the addition sign. It does some kind of calculation in the calculator, okay? But we have to know what to put into that calculation. Okay, so we're gonna start off pretty simple. What we're gonna do is we are simply going to identify the tangent ratios of the acute angle in this uh, triangle. So I'm gonna do the tangent of Q with you. Now, I'm gonna zoom in, okay? And what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is I'm gonna ask you, redraw the triangle for each of these, okay? So we're gonna redraw the right triangle because we are going to put some labels on these triangles, okay? So here's our right triangle. Here's the 12, here's the five, here is the 13. Okay, do you guys remember when we did special right triangles? We told you guys, put the ratios in a box. You guys remember that? Well, we're going to do that same thing, okay? We're going to put our ratios in a box. Now, when it says that we are at tangent of angle Q, guys, this is our reference point. That is our point of reference. So I'm gonna call that the reference angle, okay? And then to figure out the fraction, remember Okay, we said that the tangent of the angle, so tangent of Q equals opposite over adjacent. So I need to find the opposite side and the adjacent side. Okay, the opposite side is opposite of the angle. So over here is my opposite side. I'm gonna put a box around that, okay? Opposite of the 90 degree angle. That is my hypotenuse, my HYP. I'm gonna put a box around it. And then the way that I like to do it is what's left over is your adjacent, your ADJ. Okay, this is my adjacent, okay? So if I'm looking for the tangent of angle Q, I would do opposite over adjacent. So my fraction would be five over 12. That's simply what the, this part is asking for, okay? So opposite over adjacent. Now, the decimal. Guys, put it into your calculator and you divide five by 12. That's your decimal and you're gonna round it out to four decimal places. So guys, go ahead, put it in your calculator and tell me, okay, round it to four decimal places, what is the tangent of five over 12?
Okay, so when you take 5 divided by 12 in your calculator, guys, you should have gotten 0. 0.4167. That is simply the decimal form of the tangent of angle Q. Okay, so all I'm doing right here is trying to identify which is the opposite side, which is the adjacent side. You guys are going to do angle P on your own in class. Okay, all right, so next, I want you guys to go down your page and go to number five with me. And before we do this, let's read the instructions. It says you're going to label the adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse and put a box around each label. Then you're going to find the missing side length that is denoted there. And we're going to round all of our answers to the nearest tenth. Okay, so if I go down to number five and I'm going to zoom in. Okay, very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the angle that was given to me. Guys, that's going to be your reference angle. So right here, there is my reference angle. Okay, I'm going to label. I'm going to start by labeling the opposite. Remember, the opposite side is the side that is literally opposite of the angle. So out here, here is my opposite side. Then I'm going to label the hypotenuse, which is opposite of the 90 degrees. Here's my HYP, okay, my hypotenuse. And then what's left over is the adjacent, which you guys can see the adjacent is right next to the angle, isn't it? ADJ. There we go. Adjacent. Okay, the tangent function says that we use opposite and adjacent. Okay, so here's another way that you can figure out which function to use and when. All right, I'm going to ask you, what value, which side length do you want? Well, we want the adjacent side, and we have the opposite side. So you ask yourself, what do I have? What do I want? And that helps you to figure out which sides to use. Okay, so adjacent and opposite is part of the tangent function. Okay, so to write this out, here's how we're going to actually solve it in our calculators. We're going to write the tangent of the angle, which is tangent of 53. Okay, now once I put those together, do not separate them. I'll show you what I mean there in just a second. The tangent of 53 equals the ratio says opposite over adjacent. So my opposite side is 37. My adjacent side is y. Okay, now here's where it comes into play. Guys, you can't just put this in your calculator right now. You need to get the Y all by itself first. So in order to do that, you're going to put the tangent of 53 over 1. And guys, now we're going to cross multiply. Let me show you how this looks. Remember I told you the tangent and the 53 does not need to be separated. We're going to put that in parentheses. It's going to stay together. Okay, so when we cross multiply, all right. So when we cross multiply, I'm going to multiply the 1 times the 37 and the y times the tangent of 53. So it would be y, parentheses, tan 53 equals 1 times 37 is 37. Okay, now I still got to get the y all by itself, don't I? Okay, so to get the y all by itself, guys, if this was just y2, then we would divide both sides by 2. Okay, so we're going to divide both sides by the tangent of 53. Tangent of 53. Notice I'm keeping it in parentheses. Okay, so now what we end up with is y equals 37 over tangent of 53. Okay, now that I have y all by itself, now I can put this in the calculator. Okay, so I want you guys to see what I do here. Okay, I put in my calculator 37 divided by, I hit the tangent function, function and 53, close parentheses, and enter. Okay, why don't you try it? Tell me on your calculator, what, what did you get when you did that in your calculator? Okay, you should have gotten 27.88. Guys, if you did not get 27.88, guys, go back and CYC, check your calculators. Make sure that they are in the degree mode, okay? And if you need a refresher on how to do that, please rewind and go back and watch the video about how to use the calculator, okay? So the answers, let's see, it says in the instructions round to the nearest tenth. 
So our final answer would be 27.9. There's no units on there, so my answer is just 27.9, okay? All right, so let's recap what we did here for just a second. First of all, we found our angle of reference. We're gonna start with the angle that we know. That is our reference angle. Second, we label the ratios of opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent on our triangle. Put a box around them, okay? Then we set up the ratio, and we do that by asking ourselves, what do we have and what do we want, okay? And then, guys, you need to isolate the variables. We need to get the variable all by itself, and then we can put it into our calculators. Okay, lots of steps there, but you guys will see the more we practice this, it's going to get easier and easier. So having said that, let's go practice another one. Now, with this one, it's going to be more of a real-life type example. So let's go down and look at number nine. I'll meet you guys down at number nine. All right, number nine. This is a real-life example. And yes, it's a word problem. But guys, this is something that could seriously happen in real life. Okay, so let's read through it and let's figure out what information do we need. Okay, it says, Chris is standing 27 feet from the base of the Texas Star Fer Ferris wheel. Hey guys, we're probably gonna need that 27 feet. And when it says the base of, I'm gonna show you what that means, that's important, okay? Then it says the angle of elevation, oh, angle of elevation, from the ground to the top of the Ferris wheel is 83 degrees. Okay, so that tells me, and remember, we said angle of elevation is where you're looking out and then you look up, right? So that means that that angle of elevation is 83 degrees. It says using a ruler, draw and label the triangle with the given information. Here's what this is gonna look like. Okay, remember, you can only use the trigonomic ratios with a right triangle. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a right triangle and in real life, I'm gonna show you guys what this might look like. Okay, it says that Chris is standing 27 feet from the base of the the Texas Star uh, Ferris wheel, which by the way, guys, that's the one that's at the state fair. Okay, so Chris is standing out here. Okay, here's Chris. We'll put a little baseball cap on him. Okay, Chris is standing out there from the base of the Ferris wheel. Hey guys, the base of the Ferris wheel, if this is the Texas Star Ferris wheel, don't make fun of my drawings, okay? This is the Ferris wheel. It's gonna have all the little cars on it, right? Going around. Okay, do, again, don't make fun of my drawings, right? Okay, the base of the Ferris wheel, guys, that's where it's gonna be where it connects with the ground, okay? So having said that, okay, the base is right here. So we just said that he is 27 feet from the base, okay, 27 feet from the base. And then it said that the angle of elevation, remember, that's the angle that from the horizontal ground that goes up, right? that that is 83 degrees. Okay, so 83 degrees. Now we gotta figure out, what is it asking for? Okay, well, it's asking, and I will erase my ugly Ferris wheel just for you guys, okay? It's asking us for the height of the Ferris wheel. Okay, do you guys see, let me see if I can highlight that right here. It says find the height of the Ferris wheel. Well guys, the height of the Ferris wheel Hey, that's right here, right? Because here was the base. I told you guys I was gonna erase it, but I didn't tell you I wasn't gonna redraw it. Here's my wonky old Ferris wheel, okay? So I need to find the height of the Ferris wheel. Okay, guys, all we've done so far is we've drawn and labeled the picture according to what was in our word problem. Now, we need to label adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. So remember, we're going to start with our reference angle, which is right here. That's our reference angle. What is opposite of the reference angle? Hey guys, do you guys remember, and, and you know, look on your notes, what should I label as opposite of the reference angle? Adjacent, opposite, or hypotenuse? Okay, hopefully you guys said, hey, that is the opposite side. The OPP goes across from the angle. It's opposite of the angle. Okay, and then what should I label is across from the 90 degree angle. Which side should I label that? 
Amos Smith, that is always, always, always the hypotenuse. Our HYP is always across from the 90 degree angle. Okay, so what label should I put on the 27 feet? Yeah, hey guys, that's what's left over. That is the adjacent. It is right next to the angle, isn't it? Okay, we're getting there. Okay, now to find the height of the steering wheel, first earth steering wheel, oh my gosh, the height of the Ferris wheel, okay? We're gonna start with what we know and what we want. We want the opposite side. We have the adjacent side. Yeah, that's our tangent function, isn't it? Remember, the tangent of an angle equals opposite over adjacent, okay? And I'm gonna put my little angle side. Okay, opposite over adjacent. Okay, so having said that, I wrote that little tangent angle equals opposite adjacent. That's how we're gonna set this up. Okay, so the tangent of the angle. Tangent of, what was our reference angle again? That's right, tangent of 83 equals, okay, and then what should I put in for the opposite uh, in the numerator? What should we put there? Okay, the opposite side is x. Okay, and then what should we put in for the denominator, which is the adjacent side? What should we put in for that? Okay, yes, we should put in 27 because it's 27 feet. Okay, now, remember, you're gonna put this over one and you're gonna cross multiply. Okay, also, guys, remember, your tan 83 goes in parentheses. So when I cross multiply, I end up with one times x, and the 27 times the tangent of 83. So this ends up being x equals, oh, if I multiply 27 times tangent of 83. Hey guys, look, I don't even have to divide this time, don't I? Because x is all by itself. We already have x by itself over here. Okay, so put this in your calculators and I want you guys to tell me, okay? And remember this says round to the nearest foot round to the nearest foot. What is the height of the Texas Star Ferris wheel? Okay, did you remember to round to the nearest foot? And did you remember your units? Right, you gotta remember your units. All right, so our final answer is 220 feet tall. Okay, 220 feet tall. So guys, the only thing we knew to start this problem is we knew how far Chris was from the base of the uh, Ferris wheel, and we knew the angle of elevation for him to look up at the top of that Ferris wheel. Okay, and we found out how tall the Ferris wheel was. Ah, I don't know what you guys, but this is so cool. And by the way, yes, I have used this in real life. Like when I went to New York City and I was going to say, hey, you know what? I know how many blocks I am from the Empire State Building. And I had a friend of mine tell me approximately the angle that I looked up at the top of the Empire State Building. And I used trigonometry to try to figure out how tall was the Empire State Building before I even got there. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, how many of you are wondering, hey, Miss Smith, were you right? Well, guys, I was a little off because my friend didn't really know the angle. I was off by a couple hundred feet, which actually is quite a lot, isn't it? Okay, but it was fun to try it. Hey, you never know. All right, I'm going to do one more with you guys. Let's go down and take a look at number 11 together. Number 11. Okay, again, number 11 is a little bit different. Okay, so let me talk to you guys about how this is going to work. It says, find the tangent of the larger acute angle. So that means the angle that, not the right angle, but whichever one of the other two acute angles is bigger. Okay, in a right triangle with the side lanes of 20 centimeters, 10, or excuse me, 16 centimeters and 12 centimeters. Okay, so let's draw this triangle. Okay, remember, it's a right triangle. Okay, so I'm gonna draw, oh, maybe I'm going to draw. Let's see here. All right, there is my base. Okay, there's my height. Okay, so I have this particular triangle, right triangle. My side lengths are 20, 16, and 12. Okay, hey guys, can you tell me which side should I put 
as the 20 centimeters. Which side should I label as the 20 centimeters? Should it be the base down here, the height, or the hypotenuse? What do you guys think? Ah, hopefully you guys remembered the longest side is always the hypotenuse. So that one should be our 20 centimeters. Okay. And yes, this is our hypotenuse, isn't it? Okay. Then now the question is, how do I figure out which one is the larger acute angle? Hey guys, the larger acute angle is going to be, and you can write yourself a note right here, is going to be across from the longer leg. Okay, across from the longer leg. Well, let's look. We've got two legs. We've got 16 and 12. Okay, oh, and I just wrote that right. Let me move me out of the way there. There you go, now you guys can see it. Okay, so across from the longer leg. So the longer leg is the 16. Okay, so the 16 on my picture well, guys, do you see that my base is obviously longer? So I'm going to write the 16 centimeters down here, the 12 centimeters right here. Now it says find the tangent of the larger acute angle. So we just said that it is across from the longer leg. That means that this is the angle that we're looking for. That angle right there is our reference angle because it's across from the longer leg. Okay. So that means that the 16 centimeters, should I label that as the opposite side or the adjacent side? Okay, yes, this one is opposite of our reference angle. So that is the opposite side, okay? And then what's left over is the adjacent side, okay? All right, so when it says, to draw and label the triangle, we already did that. We put our ratios on there. We put a box around them. Now we're going to round to four decimal places to see what the tangent is. So guys, we're not actually going to have to use the tangent function. Check this out. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, isn't it? Okay, so the tangent of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. Okay, so I want you guys to tell me which one of the following ratios is correct. So you should have said opposite, Ms. Smith, that is 16 over adjacent, which is 12. And it says that we're going to round to four decimal places. So the tangent of the angle equals, okay, put it in your calculator. What's 16 divided by 12? Hey, y'all, I got like 1.3 repeating, like 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, right? So that means that if we round it to four decimal places, it would be 1.33333. And guys, that's all it's asking for right there. We didn't have to solve for a side length or anything. Okay, that is all it's asking you for on these types of problems. Okay, now, ladies and gents, I expect you to have lots of questions. That is okay. Okay, this stuff is brand spanking new. We're going to practice it a lot. And yes, we are going to be using it the rest of the year. And yes, you're going to have lots of word problems. So we're going to practice those. Okay, so when you're dealing with your word problems, just remember, okay, we're going to have a right triangle. Angle of elevation is the angle in which you look up. Okay, and remember those ratios, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, and where they go. Okay, I expect to hear some lots of questions in class. All right, until then, guys, adios.